Oh, yes. Yes. Indeed. So, yeah. first things first, man. How did you come to be in Los Angeles? I mean, both in terms of, you know, the location, you know, but also, you know, at the times, you know, considering the, you know, journalistic tradition you come from. Well, part of it was, uh, to be honest, my three-year-old grandson on, <laughs> on, on Facebook Live and, I mean, on, you know, FaceTime stuff saying, Pop, pop, when you coming? <laughs> but um, no, it's, it's, you know, coming from the undefeated, you know, we, we built something, mm. you know, essentially a startup inside a big company, <laughs> uh, ESPN, uh, with the mandate to focus on race, sports, and culture. But we really, it was really like an experimental lab, an ongoing mm. experiment where we were trying things. I mean, we did you know, two best-selling children's book. We did poetry, original music, comedy. Um, you know, we, we turned our site purple and honor Prince, you know, yeah. death. Uh, you know, we just, we just did things and it was just this sense of empowerment of, of just, you know, experimenting and trying things and, and building things. You know, sports is, is a great window in, into the world and into into to, to human beings, really, because yeah. Sports is a connector. Uh, sports has everything. But then there's culture, and, and we fuse that. And, and I, I just think like this, the past five years as we were building The Undefeated, it really made me think about what could I, how could I take that? Uh, Patrick Soon-Shown, you know, when I started talking to him about coming to the LA Times, it was like, what could I take from where I had been and what we had done and, and apply it to, uh, a newspaper and that's right. where that's where I started that's how I ultimately came to to be here got you I mean yeah I also come from a sports background and I feel like <clears throat> it helped prepare me to cover politics it helped prepare me to cover culture in a way I think that you know other you know areas of coverage maybe don't necessarily prepare you to be as versatile did you start doing that before when you were at the post or were you, were you you know in sports before that you know, I always flirted with sports. I, uh, I did some writing and some profiles and, mm -hmm. and I was always interested in sports. Uh, certainly when I was managing editor, I oversaw sports as one of the things I oversaw. And so, you know, sports has always been, uh, you know, close to me. It's really how I got into journalism, mm -hmm. to be honest. I mean, reading the sports pages many years ago, uh, Shirley Povich, when I was just a kid, the great late Shirley Povich, and that was my first like entree to the newspaper and to journalism. Same here. I, my mother would always say, you know, would you please put the sports page down and finish your homework? And now I get to tell her that it actually paid off. <laughs> so <laughs> what I want to ask you <clears throat> is specific, uh, specifically about newspapers. I mean, was it particularly important to come back to your newspaper roots in taking this job? Is this something you were looking to do? No, I'll be honest, I, I wasn't looking to do anything, but, but oh. really building the undefeated, you know, mm -hmm. and we really were building it across the Walt Disney Company and, and, and really trying to build a global brand. I was having a lot of fun. Um, it was really in conversation with, with Patrick and Michelle and, and, and his daughter Nika and what they wanted to do with the Los Angeles Times. And, you know, this is the, the biggest newsroom west of the Potomac. You know, mm -hmm. the newspapers we think of now and that, it, you know, the New York Times and and the big national papers, the Washington Post, where I used to work, Wall Street, they're anchored on the East Coast. You know, yeah. California, you know, I think in, in many ways, it's, it's the most interesting and arguably the most important state in the country. And, yeah. and, you know, I keep coming back to something when I was on vacation and there was uh, this, you know, it was a woman I met in Mexico who was running a nonprofit Mm -hmm. in San Francisco and, and, and she said to me, you know, I come to think of Los Angeles, uh, it's, it's to the 21st century what New York was to the 20th century. It's, huh. it's a place where everybody comes, it's where you can look at, at where the country's going and if, if you were going to think about 
taking the newspaper job and, and reinventing and experimenting and you just wanted to pick a place on a map, I don't think you could pick a better place than, than Los Angeles. Yeah, I know you mentioned that at the Texas Tribune Festival just last week. You know, what kind of experiments maybe you think maybe would be particular to this city that you could do in you know, a newspaper environment? Well, it's, it's great that this is kind of the home of, of entertainment. You know, this is, right. we're at the epicenter of, of entertainment and, and, and the streaming wars. And there's so many great like content creators here uh, doing so many amazing things. And, yep. and so you're, you're here and the chance to me to, to, to potentially work with other people, to bring people into the Los Angeles Times ecosystem, to do more with, with all of the great journalism that we already do. Right. at the LA Times, um, you know, whether that's more uh, experimenting in audio, uh, in docu-series, scripted, but uh, digital shows, all kinds of things. I think that, that here's a, you know, that, that's what I'm looking forward to. Right, and that is where we get to the point where, you know, we talk about how does technology help you, you know, do this reinvention that you've talked about of the LA Times? Um, how do you, you know, take this underdog paper, you know, which seems weird because it's in Los Angeles, but it's underdog using technology. You know, I, I, don't, I don't mind using the term underdog because <laughs> it, you know, gives you a little extra, yeah. you know, incentive, fuels your competitive juices. Um, but, I, but I think, man, we, I look at the staff we have and we have some of the greatest journalists in the world, mm -hmm. you know, and I look at, you know, you kind of look like, man, this roster is tremendous. Um, and so there's a lot of things we do. But look, I think that, um, you know, one of the things about the, the platforms and the accessibility to uh, our work is that, you know, we can, we can create on those platforms. You know, we can, mm -hmm. we can take the things we do and, 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 and we're gonna expand what we do in the social content creation mm -hmm. uh, area. We're gonna, we're gonna do, try to reach people where they are uh, I, I'm really a big fan of doing things live, and I know it's, yeah. it's uh, you know, I love being here, actually, and, <laughs> you know, um, and I know COVID has some, a lot of restrictions, but, you mm -hmm. know, going to where people are, you know, showing up in their neighborhoods, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sponsoring concerts or block parties, uh, now we're you talking. know, bringing reporters to, to engage with uh, in, in communities where we may not, not need a fresh look or people haven't given us a chance. Right. And so, um, you know, I think there's a lot of ways to just, just create. And, and I think it's about a mindset, right? I, I think, you know, to think that, well, what can we do today? You know, what can we do different? How can we challenge ourselves? Um, journalism is really good at interrogating everybody else. And, and we, we do <laughs> some tr tremendous investigations and, yeah. and we hold people accountable, which we should. And, but we also can use that skill to interrogate ourselves. Like, what could we do different? What could we do better? Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, how can you do anything better within the LA Times? I mean, <clears throat> there's a culture there, you know, with, you know there's, uh, there's issues, I guess, you know, that have been reported uh, throughout the, I guess, the last decade. And how do you take that and, and do something new with it? Look, I mean, I, I think the most important thing is always with, with culture is to build motivation. I mean, we all um, have individual lives, right? I mean, mm -hmm. work is not our only thing. You know, it's not all of who we are, right? And, and, and people have, have struggled in their lives. Uh, they have individual personalities. And I, I think it's important to kind of use all of that. You know, um, I think about building motivation. And, mm -hmm. and finding ways to motivate people. I'm always thinking about that. How can we get people excited about their work uh, so they can be happy, you know? And if we can get them, you know, happier in, in their non-work, then, then maybe they're more productive in their work, you know? So there's just ways of, uh, um, I, I also think that motivation and, and building that sense of, of, of teamwork and that we're all in this together is, is, is really important to that. Mm -hmm. uh, process. I mean, we do, I think we have to be essential uh, to, to grow uh, the LA Times, be right. essential in people's lives. And we do a lot of essential things. I mean, during COVID, tremendous COVID tracker, 
right. let you know everything you want to know. And the LA Times, is, you know, they built a tremendous one, at, or we had an earthquake not long ago, and we have a quake bot, you know, <laughs> let you can track earthquakes in, in real time or a wildfires map. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, there's lots of things that, that we're in the space of building things. You, you know, we're in the tech world too, because we have, you know, we have product designers and, and mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're building things and creating things. So, um, any of those things you can mention or? I just mentioned three, you know? Yeah, no, no, I mean, uh, anything new, anything well, new. Well, I, you know, I'm not gonna give out any trade secrets of things <laughs> that we're working on, but, but uh, I think that, that we're, we're constantly thinking about like what can we do mm -hmm. to take our work and to get it to audiences in new ways and to get it to new audiences that may think, man, I didn't know if we put out if we put out the, the soundtrack of Los Angeles and we created <laughs> that and we found the the best group of musicians from different neighborhoods and we put that together. People are probably not thinking the LA Times is doing it, but but as a citizen of this community, we could do that. And, and mm -hmm. those are the kind of things we probably will do. Now, of course, at the heart of that, he's talking about being a, becoming essential. How, in this era, do you get people to subscribe to a product that's primarily digital and that sometimes that they don't even have access to? Well, I, you know, it's a very complex thing. Part of it is giving him finding multiple entry points mm. so that people can can access you in different ways. I mean, look, but, it, but it's also, look, we, we just had a, um, you know, promotion campaign, uh, the LA Times, a, a dollar for six months. There you, you go. Know, that should get people's attention, a dollar, uh, really? I mean, <laughs> and, and that's about as accessible as you can get uh, yeah. to subscribe. You give us a chance to try it out, see if you like it. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, we, we have tremendous reporting and you, you constantly, whether uh, it's about in the entertainment area or, or, or the homelessness mm -hmm. crisis here in, in Los Angeles, uh, you know, we, we bring you original work, original reporting that um, no one else is doing. Uh, you know, how has tech in your time, you know, changed news gathering, you know, even changed what newspapers have become and what they're for? Well, uh, look, I, I I think it's no secret, right? And it's certainly no secret to people here uh, at, at this conference that uh, it, is, it has changed how we, we get information, the gateway to our work. And, and we're, um, we're connected to all the, the big tech platforms. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all of them is, that's how people get their information and, and we're part of, of putting our information on those big platforms. Okay. You know, now it has had certainly a, a big change and shift in the, the, the advertising revenue uh, mm -hmm. dynamic, certainly, yes. and it, it's hurt newspapers in a lot of ways, uh, local newspapers particularly. I think there's something like 150 have uh, left, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the last decade, uh, just in California, you know? Yeah. And, and so that's, that's an issue. It's an issue for local communities because local communities need, you know, local coverage in their communities so, right. and, and original reporting, dramatic uh, impact. But on, on the positive side of it, right, there, mm -hmm. it's, it's created this ability for us to extend our work all, all over the world, right? And anybody can access an LA Times story. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, that's a good thing. Um, brings to mind something I thought about with regard to you, you coming from the undefeated where you're, you know, if not primarily serving, at least reflecting th uh, through the lens of underserved communities. Um, that mandate, now that you are, you know, of course, you know, in charge of all the beats at LA, in the LA Times and a city that's diverse, how do you see you know, the mandate to make sure that underserved communities not just you know, have access to this, but are you know, participating in what you're doing? Well, I, I think that's a, a great news organization Mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure that you cover all of the communities and have relationships. I think it's important to have relationships in, with communities that go beyond simply you uh, plopping in there and writing your stories and leaving, you know, um, to, to, to do events, to, to be present, to, to maybe 
start, you know, we've talked a lot about community journalism mm -hmm. program. Um, I was really, I'm on the, the, the Pulitzer Prize board. I was really proud that we honored uh, mm -hmm. the young woman in Minneapolis who had, uh, you know, the, the courage to train her um, video, her camera, yes. you know, uh, phone camera on uh, the George Floyd killing and captured that and, and we honored her with a special Pulitzer citation. But I think about not just the stories that, that are, uh, tell the, the tragedies, but, but the life, the joy, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's, there's a lot of people documenting their neighborhoods and in ways mm -hmm. in, in real time. And, and some of that we should link up with them and, and, right. and bring it to, to, to our own readers. And I just think that there, there's a lot we can do, you know, civically bringing people together, connecting people that, that mm -hmm. is uh, in addition to our, our role as a journalistic institution. It's funny you mentioned, you know, what happened in Minneapolis. I feel like, you know, if everyone has a phone in their hands, uh, everyone can at least be a media maker, if not necessarily a journalist. Uh, you know, with that accessibility, is it tougher for us to, you know, maintain, you know, that sort of separation between what we do and, you know, what anyone can do? Man, there's not a lot of people can do what you do, right? Like, thank you. <laughs> you know, your your work. I mean, you when you go out, original reporting, it is a, it is a craft. I mean, journalism mm -hmm. is still a craft. It has has rules and, and values and principles of affairs. Lots of people look at it and it's edited, it's curated, it's and and to get information, particularly things that sometimes people don't want you to know, right. uh, public record searches. There's a lot that goes into it. It's, it's a practice craft, it's a learned craft. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of the reporting that you, you need journalism training, you know, to, to do that reporting. Now, there's a, there, there has been a democratization in some ways of, of just content creation, and I, I applaud that, right? There are a lot of people are out there. You can start your own site, you can, you can open up a, a, a site, put your own video out. You could, you could just focus on sneakers, you know? You, could, <laughs> you can do whatever you want, and I, I think that's a great thing. But, yeah. but what we do at the major news organizations, uh, some of that is not done anywhere else. You know, we had a tremendous um, photojournalist, foreign correspondent, Marcus Yam, you know, was in Afghanistan, has done, just done some, did some tremendous work, uh, both through the, the prism of this camera, but also on the ground reporting. And, and you know, there are not a lot of people doing that work. Right. I want to also remind everyone here that if you have questions, uh, we're going to have uh, five minutes at the end uh, for Q&A. So if now would be the time to, you know, think of what you might want to ask Kevin and, uh, you know, get ready to ask that in a few minutes. Um, I do want to make sure I ask you about, obviously, the effect of COVID-19 on what you're doing. Um, you know, of course, you know, there's a physical newsroom still, technically, but, you know, how many people right now at the Times are going in? Yeah. Well, we had a, a small sample uh, of coming in, you know, of regulars who were, were coming in on a volunteer basis uh, under our protocol. So very small uh, population, and mm -hmm. we're trying it to see how that uh, worked. And, worked so, so far so well, it's, it's not a, but I, I gotta tell you, I, I love just being in there. I've been coming in two or three times a week. Uh, I'm new, so mm -hmm. uh, I have some organic conversations, even with masked up, with re reporters there and, and, and others. And so it's been a, a great thing, but it, it has changed the dynamic of reporting, you know, and- you In know, what I, way? Well, I, I talked to just simply, uh, one of the top crime reporters, you know, that, that, that exists not only in our place, but in the country, Richard Winton, we were just having coffee and, and he's a tremendous, you know, journalist, many, many years, covered many big uh, crime stories. We were just talking about that, the phone, you know, having to do so much of that work on phone and, mm -hmm. and not being able to, to move effortlessly and have those connections and knock on doors and do the things that you normally do as reporters, that's, that's, change just kind of the, the dynamic of, of reporting. And yet, you know, we're publishing every day, you know? 
we're, right. we're, we're publishing and, and managing to do that work because you know journalism has always been a, a, a very resourceful and resilient craft. But, but the personal dimension is, is also very important, right? Because it's taught us a lot of things about the vulnerability of, of human beings and mm -hmm. that you know, we think we conquer everything, right? Flying to the moon, and we can, yeah. we, we got private spacecraft now, and, <laughs> uh, and, and all kinds of things. But, but you know, we, we, this really threw us yeah. for a loop, and it, it, it in a good way, it, it helped us connect with our family some more. Uh, it, it blew up the myth that you gotta fly all the way across the, the, the country with dozens of people in a meet for a meeting. <laughs> Uh, and, and there are a lot of things that we learn about ourselves and, mm -hmm. and some of it has been difficult and it's been a struggle for a lot of people. There's been depression, uh, but, but there, there have been some great things that came out of it as well about that we learned a lot about each other, but it, it's a, certainly a challenge. Now, of course, you know, before all this, you know, we now have tech that's helping us do our jobs. Obviously we're on Zoom all the time, we're on Slack all the time, but you know, tech can also get in the way of what we do. And, you know, I think back to, you know, a few years back when, you know, those uh, artificial algorithms on Facebook, you know, sparked the whole pivot to video trend that ended up, you know, with a lot of journalists losing jobs. Um, how do you see nowadays tech and journalism making peace? You know, look, there, there certainly has to be you know, a, a partnership. Maybe we we utilize the the platforms to get our work out. Um, you know, there's certainly been uh, efforts to to get more fairly compensated. You know, there's legislation mm -hmm. in Congress. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Journalism Competition Preservation Act, I think it's called, the, to try to to see if uh, you know news um, organizations uh, can you know, negotiate with the tech companies for fair compensation. Right. Um, but, but I think, you know, we, we both use the platforms and, and I know it's sometimes challenging for, for news organizations. And, mm -hmm. but, but we're here now, you know, and, that, and, and we have to, to, to live with each other. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, Facebook and things like that, do you feel like they're publishers? I mean, and if so, you know, or you, you know, what kind of ethics do they need to abide by? Well, I, I think as they themselves have seen, you know, there are a lot of, of challenges of, of misinformation. I mean, that's a, a major problem in our country. You know, mm -hmm. and, and there has to be responsibility, the same kind of responsibility we, we take, you know, at places like the Los Angeles Times to, to, to make sure stories are vetted and checked out and, and double proofed and you know media literacy is also an area I mean that's right. they it, it can join in that effort um, you know uh, to, to really educate uh, a population that didn't may not have grown up with newspapers dropped in the door and <laughs> and and make these differentiations because we have a lot of uh, misinformation dis dis disinformation and that's uh, harmful to the larger society and of course, I mean, part of that, you know, people not growing up with that, you know, newspaper on the front step, maybe I mean, we've seen a lot of diminishing local media, especially during this pandemic. How, what kind of effect do you feel like that has had? And also, how does that, you know, affect your job? Well, look, I, I think no one should applaud the, you know, and everybody should be alarmed about how much local media we have. I, I think there have been some good efforts around the country, right? Mm -hmm. In places that, uh, where people are trying to rev up with new models of uh, creating local media in, in nonprofits and, and other uh, models. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think, I think, we, I think the more um, <laughs> news organizations there are, are out there, that's, that's good for us as, as a society. Um, if anyone has any questions, now is the time that you would like you to uh, just line up at one of the microphones. Um, meantime, you know, we'll just keep talking. Um, I just want to also, it's very curious to know about um, the podcast world, audio world. How do you experiment? You, you mean, obviously, that's a technological, you know, innovation. Um, how do you experiment using audio when, you know, frankly, LA Times has already been kind of a leader in the game? 
Well, look, we, we were early, right? Uh, certainly a narrative, Chris Gofford, uh, Dirty John, you know, mm -hmm. tremendous. You know, Shawnee Hilton, who, you know, is really the first appointment. She's managing editor of New Initiatives now. She's overseeing, you know, video uh, and, and audio and, and also uh, helping us think about experiment and developing strategy. I think the audience is built up now, right, for, right. for podcasts. And, and now, to me, I always look at that is a, is a good thing. We're, we're, we are um, just building uh, our, our footprint. And I think there's a lot of room to, 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 to try to do new kinds of podcasts and mm -hmm. with new voices. And, and so stay tuned there. All right, so let's go to our first question. And uh, if everyone could keep it brief and concise as we're running up a little bit against it. Yes. Hi, my name's Alyssa Bushnell. Um, I know one of the themes that we've heard at this conference a lot is like this crisis of trust. And how do you establish as a leading news organization that you are, um, and I really appreciate the work that you've done in California in particular, being a California resident in Northern California, I'm still a subscriber of the LA Times due to the fact that you cover news of all of California, and I appreciate that, thank you. Thank you. But how do you establish that trust, and how do you prioritize it, and how do you communicate that in today's culture of disinformation? You know, I, I think it's important to be transparent. You know, I, I, I think we have to communicate more with our readers and let them know more about what we are doing. I mean, we don't get everything right, right? We, we struggle. It's really hard to, to be, I, I look at, when you're in journalism, you, you do your work in public and sometimes you do it really fast. You know, you don't have all the information you publish and it's a little bit like sports Mm -hmm. Except sports, the games are scheduled, you know, and you have a big shooting or a wildfire or something that, that people want to know about. And people sometimes leave their dinner tables and they go do this and we put it together fast. You know, I, I think where it comes to things that, and, 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 you know, we get feedback and people say, well, look at the language you use here. Look at the headline. And, and sometimes it's just human error. It's not mm -hmm. intentional. It's not... It's not a diabolical plot, but we have to, we, part of trust is we, we have to communicate back, not just with our stories. We have to tell people, look, we looked at our guidelines on crime coverage or something, and this is what we came up with about language, about sourcing, and about increasing diversity of, of subjects and who gets to comment on topics. We have to communicate that back and let people know that we, we're evolving, we listen to people, and, and we're trying to get better. And I, I think that goes a long way with trust, more communication. Indeed. Thank you for your question. All right. Well, if there's... Oh, we got one more. Yes. Yes, sir. Just tell us who you are, please. <laughs> Howdy. I'm uh, Trey Brandrap from Vox. Nice to meet you. Um, so... Uh, it's cool that uh, you know you have the sports background coming to LA Times. Y'all have a bunch of uh, big teams here. Uh, you know, there's a saying in our business every night, election night. You know, in the sports department, um, are there going to be some cool new things that you're going to be doing at the LA Times and in the sports page and and really like bringing that to life in the digital space? I mean, you talked about some of these data projects that happen. Um, around wildfires and earthquakes, but y'all's data team is also, y'all got Ben Welsh on your team who's, yeah. you know, big sports fan, big baseball fan. What do you got planned? Wow, I mean, look, we got the Super Bowl coming up. We were just having a big meeting of, of, of lots of things we can do around the Super Bowl. We, we just had a great video series around Fernando Mania. You know, the, the video team did that took a look back at uh, Fernando Valenzuela. Um, I, I think that with Chris Stone and our executive sports editor and Ileana Limon is, 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 is certainly, uh, they're, they're constantly thinking of new ways to reach audiences with documentary series and, and ways in which we can certainly take advantage of our talent. You know, we have some tremendous journalists that could get reach in, in different ways. We, you know, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about just as, you know, for nothing, the Mannings were doing their mega cast and they're just watching the game. But I think we could do that with some of our writers, you know, watching the game and, and, and commenting on the Lakers and, and the Clippers. Uh, so I just think that there, there are things that we can do to, to take advantage of our expertise and bring it 
to uh, the audiences there for sports in new ways. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, out of time. Thank you very much for being here again. Uh, Los Angeles Times Executive Editor Kevin Meredith. Kevin, thank you. Bye -bye.